everybody. Hi, Vanessa. Hey, Laura. How's it going? Doing well. I, thank you so much for jumping on with me today to talk about how we get our kiddos outside. It sounds great. It's one of my favorite things to do, so I'm excited to jump into the conversation. Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself, Vanessa? Sure. So my name is Vanessa Herrera. I am the development manager here at Latino Outdoors for the national organization. I'm also a mom of two young boys. Uh, my oldest is three and my youngest just turned one. So he's 12 months old right now. And we get outside as much as we possibly can. How about you, Laura? Uh, Laura Flores over here. Um, I am a program coordinator for Latino Outdoors Albuquerque. Um, I also have two children, two years old. She'll be three in August, and uh, my little is 11 months. He'll be he'll be a year May 4th. It's coming up, so our kids are similar in age. Yes, it's very yeah. They are very similar in age. Right on. So you want? Let's go ahead and jump into this, Laura. Uh, what kinds of things do you like to do outside with your kids? Um, I enjoy going outside and going on some hikes. Um, a lot of the times um, we'll play in streams if we can find some. Um, we spend most of our days going to the park, <laughs> going around around the neighborhood. But we do have some, some serious planning um, that occurs when we go on our hikes and, and our walks in the mountains. How about you? Um, so we live in a really small town called Kernville, which is in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. And so we're pretty lucky to have a lot of access to nature. Um, so like you, most days, it's just the park down the street, the slides. My kids are all about the slides yep. and swings, um, but we've got lots of trailheads. So we do a lot of hiking. Um, we spend a lot of time next to the river because there's a river here uh, in, in my town. We spend some time at the creek as well, throwing rocks, playing with sticks. Uh, uh, occasionally we get to go camping uh, or get to do other kind of outdoor things, but mostly walking around and trying to get these kiddos out on the trail. I love that you said playing with sticks and rocks um, because that is something that my, my little two-year-old loves all the time, right? It doesn't matter where we are, if, whether we're walking around our neighborhood or if we're on our hikes or down by the bosque, there is always a rock or there's always a stick that she'll find that, that is her favorite rock and her favorite stick. She even has a shirt um, that says, I don't always look for rocks. Oh wait, yes I do. <laughs> <laughs> I want one of those shirts for my boys. I totally do. The youngest one is usually in a carrier and uh, he he holds a stick in his hand. If he doesn't, he like pulls my hair the whole time. So he, he holds a stick in his hand and the other one is constantly like bringing me rocks to put in his pockets and like walking down the trail. Sometimes he pretends he's skiing, which he's never done, but he saw it on TV. And so he's like, pretends he's skiing with both sticks. And sometimes it's like his hiking pole or his little fishing pole. That's beautiful. You know, you brought you brought up that they like to pretend, right? Um, I know in previous conversations, Vanessa, we talked about how do we get our little ones up the trail and then sometimes even back down the trail or maybe even to the trailhead itself. <laughs> do you want to maybe talk a little bit about, I, I know when we've talked, we said, you know, we've, we've driven myself personally, I've driven maybe an hour and a half before and we only made it to the trailhead, right? It, to the parking lot, actually. We got my kid out of the parking lot. We had a little bit of a tantrum or sidetracked by those rocks and sticks, right? And we were there maybe 30, 45 minutes just taking a look at the birds and the trees and didn't really make it to the trail. Have you had any similar experiences? <laughs> Yes, yes, especially, uh, yeah, I've definitely made it to the trailhead and not left the parking lot. <laughs> um, my, <laughs> yeah, my oldest, uh, when I was pregnant, and so he was like almost two at the time, we got there, it was like one of my favorite trailheads, and it's a really long dirt parking lot. And so I parked, I made the mistake of parking too far away from the actual trailhead and we never left the parking lot like he found some rocks he like i finally got him to walk to the sign that announced like the trailhead and then he decided it was time for a snack 
that it was time to just sort of hang out. And so, yeah, I, I think uh, one of one of the big takeaway points for me, like one of my biggest tips, is just adjust your expectations because. Even though we didn't get to go hiking at all, like we literally did not make it onto the trailhead. Uh, we still had a good time. He was outside, I was outside. He had his little backpack on, I had my backpack. You know, we sat down, we were enjoying the sun, we had some snacks, we saw some birds, we talked about where we were and it was still a good time, but we didn't get to go hiking at all. <laughs> I love that, you know, you say adjust your expectations. Um, as an adult, right? Because the kids don't really know what the trail was, right? They they were just out there making memories, having a good time. Um, oh, totally. Yeah, and that and that's how my kids are too, right? I mean, if I'm like, let's go hiking on the Sandia Trail, it's my my kids gonna be like, what is that, right? I mean, every trail is <laughs> <laughs> similar to them. You know, they're they're so young that they don't know which trail is what yet. But being outside with mom and dad or another adult, right? They're just happy to be outside. They're happy. Um, and, and, and that's right, the more we do it, the easier it gets. <laughs> it's so true, it is so true. So Laura, I would love to know, like, what are your essentials? Like you're taking your kids out, you're heading for the trail, what is it that you always wanna make sure that you have with you? So my essentials are uh, might be a little different than you. Since we're in Albuquerque, uh, we get, I wanna say like 360 days of sunshine, but you're in sunny California, you probably get all of, uh, every single day. So SPF, right, so sunblock for sure, uh, lots of water. We make sure that um, all adults have plenty of water and my little one has water as well. Um, hats to cover their heads. If we have, um, depending on the, the hike length, um, we might take the Osprey because our Osprey has a nice little um, canopy that'll cover the baby's head. For sure, some snacks. Um, like you said, right? We we know our little ones get hungry on the trail, so lots of snacks. Um, diapers and wipes are a good one to have. You never know when you're going to have a little accident on on the trail. Um, and then just getting there, I want to talk a little bit. We found out my little one um, gets car sick. <laughs> And oh, we, no. found it out, we found it out the hard way um, a couple of times. The messy <laughs> way. <laughs> There's no easy way. Um, but, you know, first time we're like, oh, maybe there was a virus. Second time we're like, oh, maybe she's car sick. The third time we're like, okay, well, now we have to prepare, right? So we have our own little car kit where, you know, we have a plastic bag in there. We have a change of clothes. Um, we have some dry snacks just to keep us going if, uh, you know, if she's up for it. Usually once we stop and we kind of walk around, she's good to go. Um, does that, does that look a little different than your essentials? It's pretty similar. It's pretty similar. Definitely. Um, my youngest, I like to get him to wear a backpack and he, and it's like nothing fancy. Literally he wears a backpack that my partner bought him at a garage sale. It's just yes. like an old like camelback and it works because the straps were really thin. So it fits on his little body. And so he, we get him to try to carry his own water. Um, if we have him carry his own snacks, he just stops and eats them all. <laughs> so he carries his own water. Sometimes he carries like some toys. He'll bring like trucks with him for the walk. Um, and then uh, my youngest, I have him always in a carrier, usually the same in the Osprey carrier. I love that carrier. It has like the shade, so he's protected there. We have sunscreen with us, water for sure, snacks for sure. And that's pretty much about it. There's a couple diapers that sort of live in the carrier and some wipes that live in the carrier. But those, those are the total essentials just to sort of like make sure that we're going to be okay. Like the snacks, the hats, the water, like definitely. And then whatever I'm carrying, whatever I'm carrying the little one in because he doesn't walk yet, uh, which is a good thing. He's right. uh, <laughs> Once they could both walk and they're going in two different directions, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, and you need another so, adult or three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. I'm always recruiting people to like come with us. <laughs> I'm just like friends, family. My partner comes a lot with us. Like, yeah, like my single friends, especially. I'm like, you come hang out with your niece and nephew. This will be great. It's just nice to have um, like with us. I hear that. Um, so you talked a little bit about the Osprey. I want to offer just a couple other 
carriers that I've used in the past, depending on the size of, of my kiddos that have lasted almost three years now. Um, I, when, when my, my babies were I mean, up to about a year, I had a, um, a cloth wrap that I used. That one was like a, a Moby, just a, a, a cloth sling that I used. Um, and depending on the hike too, right. That one was just perfect because I could have, um, the babies just close to me. I could feed them. I can hold them. They felt comforted. They felt safe and secure. Um, and then we gradually moved to a, a Lily baby that was a little bit sturdier um, and then kind of helped them or allowed them to kind of explore on their own and then graduated again into that offspring. I think we've had a pretty similar experience um, with all of those different carriers. And the soft carrier, we have um, an, an ergo baby, I think is what it's called. Uh, the, the soft carrier, it just lives in the car and he still fits in it. And sometimes I put him in that because it's just really easy. I like those two because they're a lot less expensive. Like I would definitely recommend to anybody who is out there, any pregnant person who's out there who likes to get outside or wants to get outside with their kids, put one on your on your registry for if you're having a baby shower, put one on your registry. Those the soft carriers aren't expensive and they work really well. And they work really well for the long time. And the the Osprey one, I know uh, we bought ours used. Um, online and I know that you can sometimes find them online used as well that like brings down the price a little bit and um and we also were able we were gifted one for with my first son we were gifted a Kelty one and that one worked really well too but it didn't have the sunshade and I really like I really like the sunshade I will say oh go ahead (laughs) Yeah, that one helpful tip. If you are a parent out there and you want, or a Thea or Theo out there, and you want to bring your little on a Latino outdoors trip, I know that a lot of our regions have um, Osprey packs that you can borrow for the day to take out. So if you're like wanting to uh, and you're signed up for something, like ask, hey, do you have a pack? Because a lot of our regions do right now. And so that that's another helpful way to kind of get the kids on us when they can't walk on their own. Absolutely. It makes it so much easier and you enjoy it, I think a little bit more, right? Because you know that they're secure. They're not going to run off into the creek or something, right? You're not having yeah. to chase them around, um, which is kind of nice. I, I thank you so much for, for adding that in there. You're right. We do have, um, you know, depending on the region, there are additional ospreys that can be can be borrowed and and I like that you said you you bought your gear used. We also did, and I mean we've had it three years now, and I'm not sure how long the person had it before us, but it it's still in great condition, right? All of ours, even the one that lives in the car. Like you said, I was I was I was laughing because we definitely have the pack that lives in the car. Right? Some days I'm like, oh, I don't need to wa- take that out to wash it, but you know, for the most part, it that's where it lives. Yeah, and I, I find that those soft carriers, like, they're so good for when they're super little. And that would be another thing I would say, like, if you want to get your kids outside, um, today is a good day to start, like, if you never have before, but start when they're really little. I don't know about you, but when my babies were super young, like, just a couple weeks old, um, like, a month old, for me, from, like, my postpartum mental health, being outside just helped so much just to get my body moving to like not be seeing the inside of my house to be in the trees everything and i could carry them and they were super secure and and in some ways it was so much easier (laughs) than like the two going in different directions right now but i would say that to people like start early like even if it's just like a walk around the block um you're outside your baby is outside you're getting used to carrying them they're getting used to being on you so like now like it's no problem getting my kiddos in the pack, um, getting my old my my twelve month into a pack because he like he's really used to it because he's literally been carried, at, like I wore him in the house, I carried him on my back, uh, and on my in my front, and then in the pack like pretty much since he's been born. Yeah, and. And if they're outside, I'd like to offer too that, you know, it's good for sensory, right? Let them, let them touch the grass, let them touch the rocks, um, let them feel the leaves, the crunch of the leaves or the softness of the leaves. Um, It's really good for oral communication too. Do you see the bird? Do you see, is the rock, the rock rough, right? So just getting outside is so good 
for experimental health, um, our oral, just our communication, um, for our sensory, for our, you know, our kids who are sensory driven or even just adults who need a little bit of extra sensory. <laughs> Yeah, so Laura, we can't finish this conversation without talking some disasters because they happen. I would love to know, I would love to know like some of your occasional disasters. What's sort of a moment where you're like, oh my gosh, this is happening. Okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> let's see, let's there. So I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, and one thing I like to tell any of my friends who ask about how do you get your kids outside? Your pictures look so glamorous. Your kids are always so happy. That's not the truth. A hundred percent of the time, <laughs> right? Like I, yeah, I took some pictures and I only posted the good ones. So never compare yourself to social media or, you know, somebody that you're following, um, because we've had blowouts, right? Where there is just poop everywhere. Um, that was, that was a disaster. <laughs> and, and it, you know, it's, it's not, it's not like, it's not comfortable for anybody. Not um, glamorous. <laughs> it is not glamorous going down a trailhead, you know, with, <laughs> with everything sliding down. Um, but that, that was a disaster. Uh, we've had, you know, two-year-old meltdowns on trails where I've, had a kid in a pack and had to carry another one because I was really ambitious going, you know, a couple miles. Um, but the thing about it is the next day, my kids are still saying, hey, can we go on a hike? Hey, can we go camping? Hey, can we, you know, they want to do it again. Um, so maybe my meltdowns <laughs> or the way that I'm feeling during their meltdowns, that's what I mean. They, they're they just, they're, you know, the kids, the kids really only appreciate the outdoors, if that makes sense. It totally does. It How totally about you? Does. Oh gosh, I luckily have not had the poop blowout on the trail, but I've definitely had the like the the two year old melting down, the three year old melting down. That has definitely happened. Uh, I've gone on hikes where the little one that I'm carrying just cries the whole time, just like screams, wails, and the other one is like running down the trail and super excited, and the one on my back is just like, he's just not, not into it. And he's right here, so he'll be upset and just pulling my hair the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, we've we attempted to go camping a couple times, and the first time that we went camping with the two of them uh, was, we camped for maybe a total of eight hours and that includes sleeping. <laughs> like We got there, ate, put everybody into bed. They woke up in the middle of the night a bunch of times, nobody slept. In the morning, all we did was like clean up because the three-year-old would not stop crying and, and drove back home. So we've had the just sort of like full on derailed, none of the things that we planned to, to go on have happened, we're just, we're just heading home now. But like you said, Vanessa, you know, it's, it's about those experience, right? And it's about the introduction to the outdoors. And I feel like if we start here, we can only, it can only gets easier, right? We can only go up from there. Totally. Oh my gosh, Coco, like, luckily, we have not really encountered a whole lot of wild animals other than like, squirrels and birds. And lizards um but i live in a place where there uh are quite a lot of rattlesnakes i'm sure you probably have snakes in albuquerque as well but yep. there is a season when they're out and so we do a lot of talking uh i do a lot of talking with my three-year-old who is definitely exploring of like look for snakes are there snakes be aware of what's around if you see a snake you come and you run back to mom like uh because that that is a fear of mine, but you know, most places, wild animals are not an issue at all. And it, you know, if they're not super dangerous, it's good for identification. Um, my two-year-old, everything is a hawk these days. Look at the hawk, look at the hawk. Yeah, it's a pigeon. And I'm like, that's a pigeon baby. No, it's a hawk. <laughs> hey, but hey, that is a good vocabulary word for exploring nature, hawk. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And we'll go with it, right? <laughs> Be like, just, yeah, that turkey vulture is definitely a hawk. Definitely. 
It uh, looks like we've got a couple different questions here. So Laura, what are some of your outdoor goals? What are some of the things that you're like working your way up to in terms of being able to get your family to do? Um, so I would love to go camping, um, a multi-day camping outdoors in a tent um, with my kiddos, both of them. We've taken Amelia out camping. She loves it. She's been on a kayak. Um, I've had her in a pack on on some pretty long hikes. Um, but now now that we have two, <laughs> um, we'll see if we can we can manage both of them. So that would be my 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 short term goal. We're actually. Um, Amelia asked this weekend, can we go camping? So we're going to set up a tent in our backyard and do a little a, a dry it. run. Yeah, we're going to do a little dry run. Yeah. And then now that the weather is getting a little bit warmer, um, we're hoping in the summer to, to try again, you know, but actually a little bit further from home. How about you? Oh, I all the baby steps are so important. So I spent a good part of my 20s working as a river guide. I worked on rivers, and that is like a big part of, of who I am in my life. And so my dream is to be able to take both kids on a multi-day river trip. Uh, we are nowhere near that yet. <laughs> and most days, like getting outside literally is the park down the street. But that's what we're working towards. So like getting them used to being in a sleeping bag and being in a tent as kind of like the baby steps to get us there, getting us, getting them used to like wearing a life jacket and what that's like and spending some time in and around the river or like the tiny steps that we're taking to get there. Um, and so that is my dream of like someday we will all of us be on a raft going downstream for, for multiple days. And with Can that, I'm, <laughs> yes, please come, come for legitimately, you are invited Laura, you and your family. Uh, and that is where like the backup is so important of just like, I have this incredible, uh, group of folks that I guided with and that are lifelong friends of mine who are totally willing to go rafting with me and my kids. Like, uh, and that is, that is so important, you know, that support system, whether it is, you know, a 30 minute hike down the trail, bring the Thea's or it's like, you know, you're, you're hiking in a national park. You're going to really try to get to that waterfall. Like bring, bring the backup, you know, what your camp out in your backyard, like invite some other people. It'll be more fun, <laughs> more hands, the better. I agree. So Vanessa, you had mentioned you, you trying to get to that waterfall. Um, what happens you you had a really good technique um, for getting back. So I know sometimes our little legs get tired. What is something that you do to convince your little guy to to make it back down to the car? Um, we play airplane. <laughs> I don't know how you get back to the car, but we play airplane <laughs> or we ski. One of the two. So I literally will be like, uh, my my youngest my my kids speak Spanish. I'll be like, okay, mama, avión, and I'll put my little wings out. And be like, okay, baby, avion. And he will just run and follow me down the trail, pretending to be an airplane. Like it works every single time. I'm gonna be so sad the day where he does not want to play mama and bebe avion again. <laughs> but it definitely works. Uh, so we'll do that occasionally. We'll pick up two two sticks and pretend we're skiing, and that'll get him down the trail as well. Um, what are how how do you get your kid back to the car? You'll have, you'll have to take him to Big Bear this winter um, <laughs> to, to get him into some skis. Yeah, so we similarly play some games. I know we play a lot of tag, you know, tag you're it, and we'll run down the trail, right? And she always wants to, she always wants to beat mama. So it's, so it's like, I pretend to run really, really fast behind her <laughs> and she'll run really fast in front of me. She'll turn around. She's like, I'm winning, mom. And I say, yes, you are, baby. <laughs> right? And we just kind of. Oh, but really, it. Laura, you're the one who's winning. That's <laughs> right. You got your kid to, go to, to walk back from the really cool thing that you walked out to. <laughs> exactly. Well, we're both winners in this situation, right? <laughs> so true. It is. That is very, very true. Getting that activity in. <laughs> Yeah, no, all those things are so fun. Just being outside, being outside with them. And uh, and so uh, where are some places that you're hoping to get them outside to? So one of our favorite spots um, where uh, that we would like to go is up north in Taos. Um, it has mountains, it has um, the river for rafting. Um, we like to just take our sand toys and play. Um, they have some really good hikes. So 
Taos is our, our spot. And that's only two and a half hours, three hours away from us. Um, but of course, you know, if we can, if we can go longer trips, um, we're, we're always down to jump in the car and join, join our, our friend Vanessa on some, some river rafting trips. <laughs> so Vanessa, I know we have a couple minutes left. Do we, do we have any questions maybe from anybody who's, um, who's listening? Any questions about our essentials or our packs or you know, I did want to mention one other thing about carrying, um, carrying our kids that I did find that there was one phase in my youngest uh, when he was, I don't know, it lasted a while from about two to maybe six months. He just wanted to be held all the time. And I found that I like, I literally went on YouTube and I found how to do like a reboso wrap, like the old school kind of like carrying your kid in a reboso. And I found uh, my mom like dug through her things and found an old rebel so that worked because it had to be really long. And I used that on the trail a couple times too, which um, is another option for folks. Yeah, be, getting outdoors does not have to be expensive, right? Going to the park, going to your backyard if you have the backyard, just looking out the window, creating creating the space. Um, it can be, it, it's it's does not have to be an expensive excursion. Looks like we have another question. How has the outdoors been a space to foster stronger connections between you and your little ones as you as their mothers or their family members? Uh, how's that fostered things for you and your family? Uh, so my, we, we invite our parents to everything. Um, it could just be the extra hands. It, I mean, it's, it's about creating community, right? It's about creating lasting memories with, um, their grandparents, with their primos, um, with their tias, right? And so we, when we go out, um, we, <laughs> we invite the whole crew. We sometimes, you know, have a caravan of three, four cars. <laughs> We're Latinos. We roll deep. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. That is exactly how we roll. And, and it's the best because we're sitting there and we're laughing and we're joking and we're, you know, we're, we're, we're bonding on a different level while being outdoors. And so um, I think that it's important to see that multi-generational um, just, you know, people being outside and connecting with, with the space. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and we live a little, about two, three hours from where my parents are. So they don't, they aren't always with us when we're outside, but we do the same thing. You know, like, I love that when we're outside, it really allows us to be like mindful and to pay attention to things and to be able to like have those conversations um, about the birds or about the sticks or throwing rocks in the river. Like, it's, it's so nice to have that just focused time. Like, there's no phone in front of you because oftentimes yes. there's not cell phone reception there's no tv in front of you and it's just like me and my kids or my partner and me and the kids or you know whoever it is with us um to be able to do that like uh, you, you know what that I love part is, is so fun I, I hear that the the disconnection is is incredible and what I find is that my my father and my mother are more willing to talk about their past and their stories and you know the way that they grew up when we are outdoors versus like you know when we're inside their home and so i think that it just gives them a little bit more calm and a little bit more peace um because we are disconnecting we found a spot to sit and chat for 30 45 minutes sometimes right and uh it's 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 incredible to hear what's going on what or what happened in their past and what brought them here today and um, so I think that that piece is 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 just creating that history for for my kids. I love that. I love that the intergenerational connectedness of it all of just like all of us, you know, juntos outside enjoying it. Uh, you know, whatever that looks like, whether it's you know the picnic in the park or, or the hike down the trail, uh, it's it's beautiful. And you know, and then there's the there's the a twelve month old sitting in the corner. <laughs> Throwing sand into his mouth. <laughs> so and the same the yeah. <laughs> he'll get there though. <laughs> yeah, he'll get there or he won't. Maybe he's a, will be a botanist and you know, he's categorizing things by uh, mouthfeel and texture. <laughs> right. Getting a little bit of immunity, right, from whatever is on those rocks. 
Exactly, exactly. But no, I love what you said. You know, the more we're outside together, that, that's that's just really lovely. I yeah. think there might have been one more question about getting um, kiddos started skiing. Um, so that, Judith, is my goal this year for my my uh, soon-to-be three-year-old. I um, Unfortunately, I don't have words of wisdom to get your kiddos skiing. Vanessa, do you have any? So I have not taken my kiddos skiing, but I have been with lots of friends um, that have taken their young ones skiing. And it's the same ideas of just really adjusting your expectations. Um, I know in some places, if you live near a mountain where you're, you're going to be going there a lot or live in a place, um, you can rent kids skis like for the season. And that's really helpful because then you can literally like just put your kids skis on in the house. Cause a lot of it is just getting used to wearing that gear. I've had friends where they just like piled snow. I lived in Colorado for a little bit and they would just pile snow in the backyard and make like a little, a little ramp, like hardly anything, like maybe a ramp that would be like what you would have to get from, you know, from the sidewalk to your front door and put their kid in skis and just slide down that ramp. I think with skiing, it's just get the kid used to the gear because it's a lot of gear and it's kind of restrictive. You know, we've all seen those pictures of little kids in the snowsuits and they look like this. Like yeah. get your kid used to the gear, get your kid used to being outside, being okay with being cold, being able to like have the mittens on their hands so they don't freeze. And then in that first year, like don't expect a whole lot of actual skiing to happen. Um, it's going to be mostly shuffling around. It's going to be mostly like just getting used to it. But if what you want to, if your goal is skiing, then, you know, take those baby steps and find some lessons for them because, you know, get the professionals involved. Yeah, I agree. I think um, taking lessons is is the best route. I have I have good friends who post pictures of like they have their little kids on. It almost looks like a little leash, right? Like a like a harness, a harness that they're mm -hmm. they're skiing down the mountains. And I, I feel like a pretty good skier, but I don't know that I would feel confident enough taking my kiddos down there. So I think when I when I introduce skiing to my little one, it'll be via a lesson from my brother in law. That's even better <laughs> because. They could be in the lesson and then mama gets to go ski. That's right. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Some alone time for mom and dad. <laughs> yes. Go enjoy those slips. Vamos. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's the cool thing of uh, all the different ways that we can get outside, you know, whether your goal is to go skiing or camping uh we i will say that we did successfully get to have a second camping trip uh that went a lot better than the first and my parents came on this one and some friends came on this one and that was really that was really helpful it was a lot warmer i think it helped too so i would recommend if you're gonna go camping with kids maybe not go the first time in the winter go try a little summer time longer days, warmer outside, where you can go with just wearing a sweater or a jacket um, and taking, you know, uh, you don't have to worry as much about getting beautiful, right? It was sunny and we drove an hour away and it was pouring rain. Um, so yeah. <laughs> always check the weather because, you know, even, even an hour away can be a little different than where you currently are. And I know it might sound like common sense, but sometimes you forget, right? Or sometimes you're like, this is just perfect. And then it's not. So just kind of roll with the punches if you if you need to. That's so true. I'm glad you mentioned weather. Like we actually canceled a couple things last summer because I looked and it was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be like well above a hundred degrees. Like I don't want to take my kiddos out there. Like it's it's too it's too hot. Um, right. So we definitely you know need to be mindful of the weather and what's going on with the weather. Yeah, um, I will say that one of probably the easiest places to spend some time outside with kids if you're on the coast or if you're near a river is the beach. Uh, it's pretty simple space, you know, you get there, you're outside, the activity is right there for you. Let's dig in the sand, let's hang out. All that stuff is, is 
is really fun. I couldn't agree more. We take our sand buckets and the kids can be out there for hours. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Laura, so do you, how did you get into being outside? Did you have like, oh, here we go. We've got, speaking of the camp out, that is some of the, the very first camp out that my, my oldest ever went on. And so if you look closely in that picture, you will see another mom fail there. Uh, we got outside, it was winter. I didn't bring gloves, but we had extra socks. So <laughs> that is my son wearing <laughs> socks on his hands. <laughs> My little one always says, mom, I have sock gloves. So, you know, I think they, I think they like that. It's a little more fun that way. <laughs> so there you get a, a pretty good view of the Osprey with or without, um, with or without the top part there. And one of my favorite things about the Osprey is we can, or with any carrier is we can hike right through nap time because he'll fall yeah. asleep. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a cutie, what a cutie, your little girl. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know if Amelia was in that one. That might have been my little boy. Um, he oh, just has really long, <laughs> he has really long hair right now. We haven't cut it yet. But that front soft carrier um, was a lily baby, and and he falls asleep in that too. It has a like a front panel that you can put up, and he can rest his head, which is which is pretty nice. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's okay. No worries. They, they all they all kind of you know. <laughs> Sorry. But, you're, yeah. but you're right. I mean, the carriers are genius. I think that they've helped us. I mean, we've gone on quarter mile hikes um, to, I think the longest with these guys have been six mile hikes um, and they, they do wonders. I actually find that for a long carry, they're more comfortable for me, like on my body since they get bigger. And like now, oh gosh, my youngest is like 20 pounds so that's you know that's a considerable amount of weight to be carrying around plus you know the weight of the diapers plus the weight of some water um and so those kind of fit better the osprey pack works really well and they adjust really well um but sometimes the hip strap is hard for me to sort of get the the waistband is hard for me to sort of get where i need it to be yeah i've experienced yeah. that too um and at that point that i'm like here you go partner <laughs> Time to, to time to switch off again. It's your turn now. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, that's again why backup is important. So true. So true. Yes. But I was asking you earlier, like how um, how did you? Who introduced you to the outdoors? Who introduced you to the idea of not only getting outside yourself, but being brave enough to take your kids outside too? You know, I've been pretty adventurous um, since I was younger. Um, my my mother gave me a choice when I was a kid. It was stay inside and clean or go outside and play. And I was a go outside and play kind of gal. Right? <laughs> so I was always climbing trees, digging in dirt, making mud pies. Um, that is, and, and I loved it. I loved everything about the outdoors, you know, the bugs, the, the trees, the leaves, like everything. And so I've always had just an innate curiosity and, um, I wanted that for my kids. I wanted my kids to just love being outside as much as, as I do and, and appreciate nature and, um, becoming a Latino outdoors volunteer has really helped grow my connection with the community and has helped us be outside several times a month um, and exposing our kids to uh, incredible things in our neighborhood, exposing them to new friends um, and, and making deeper connections with our community, you know, not just, not just within our family, but within other families. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that is a pretty good choice that your mom gave you. That was some smart thinking there. <laughs> I bet it gave her a little bit of a break too, right? It wasn't like this wild child running around in the house, making more messes. She probably just took a little break. <laughs> I was like, get out of my hair. <laughs> there were five of yeah. us running around. So it was, it was good on her to get us all outside. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, I spent a lot of time as outside as a kid too, usually in the backyard with my primas, like playing around out there or in parks. We used to pretend that we were hiking through the park, me and my cousins hiking through the park. And uh, yeah. And I, you know, I think for me, it's it's a lot of the things that you're doing that like outside brings me personally so much joy, so much like, it's so good for my mental health. It's so good 
it's where like I have formed some of my closest and deepest friendships and bonds. Like I want that for my kids. And I really appreciate that, uh, you know, that my parents uh, took us outside. And even though we weren't like an outdoorsy family, we camped every year at the beach and always had so much fun, like playing with my cousins at the beach. And my parents were just like, yeah, this is, this is what we do. This is how it's going to be. And, and my mom, you know, she, I think she took me, she took me outside or took, took us camping when we were like infants even <laughs> like i'm right. just like oh this is this is what we do because the whole family the whole family is here and so for me i want that for my kids i want them to like feel connected to to nature feel connected uh, have deep connections to to place you know to the to their home river to the mountains that they see every day and and i want them to be able to like find you know be able to have uh, have a place where they can go to if they don't feel good or a place that they could go to to run around to like to be able to explore um and so I'm, I'm right there with you and just like really wanting that for my kids and then developing that stewardship from when they're teeny tiny is like no we pick up our trash you know like yeah we're gonna like take care of these places that is these places that we love I can hear the passion in your voice and and it's so true. It's so true that we want to continue this relationship, right? This positive relationship that has brought us so much joy and pass that on to our to our kiddos and you know and future generations to come. Yeah, it's so true. It is so true. And you know, you never know what what they're going to get into or you know, a career in the outdoors or whether, you know, they become park rangers or river guides or, you know, field biologists, or if they work on computers and just like go for a hike on the weekend occasionally. Like, I just, I want them to be able to, to know that the outdoors is there and that there was wilderness and that they can go explore and that there's, you know, hopefully they get to see a bear one day and <laughs> hopefully they get to like, not like up close or anything, but just to, to know that there are, you know, wild animals out there. I, I think that's, that's exciting. I mean, little kids, you know, my son gets excited when he sees ants. Yes. Yeah. It, just keep that curiosity. We definitely want to keep that curiosity in our little ones. Um, and something that you said, Vanessa, my family wasn't outdoorsy. That, that, that was kind of interesting to me because you, you were outdoors, right? So this idea of not being out, like thinking in your brain that, oh, we weren't outdoorsy, but you were outdoors. You, you took walks, you went on, you went to the beach. I would call that pretty outdoorsy, even if it was just a camping trip once a year. Right. I mean, what, who, who defines the word outdoorsy? <laughs> that is so true. And I think that is one of the things that I love about Latino outdoors is that we really like be, if you love to be outside, then you are outdoorsy. And, exactly. and I need to check myself in, in reminding myself that I love to be outside and my family loved to go to the beach to go camping. Like we were and are outdoorsy. And, and uh, you know, like there are lots of ways to get outside. My nephew is actually in the fourth grade and I have been pushing this and being like, hey, did you know <laughs> that uh, you can get free park passes, free national park passes to take your fourth grader outside? And I looked up the program and you, it runs through the school year. So uh, you can get your park pass starting in August and it runs all the way through that next August. Um, so please, if you're out there and you have a fourth grader, take advantage. Cause not only does that kid get in free to the park, um, to any national park, which, you know, there's, I don't know how many, but there's a lot of them in every state. Uh, but you know, the kid gets in free, a carload of people. So your fourth grader can get your whole family outside. And like, what, what an amazing, gift to be able to, to make that happen. We took advantage of that with my niece and we pile, again piled in a group of people in our cars and we're like, let's go. Mom and us to the next national park. And it was again, creating those memories, right? Yeah. It's yeah, you know, the caravan with a, you know, with us it's always like the the burritos de frijol, the burritos de, de huevo con papa, they're all packed and here we go. <laughs> Ready to go. That's all you need, the fuel. Exactly. <laughs> well, and the fuel you all. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that those passes work in national monuments and other like national park sites. So if you're living in a place, you have a fourth grader or a fourth kid, nephew or niece or next door neighbor. Uh, and there's not a national park nearby, 
um, they do work uh, in monuments and other national park sites, uh, which is a pretty awesome way to get outside. To, to vamanos to the next national park. I love that. Yes. Do you have a, do you have, I think isn't there national monuments kind of near Albuquerque? We do, we have, um, so we have the white, white sands. Um, we have Bandelier, um, we have Carlsbad Caverns. Those are all, I think, national monuments. Those are all some really cool spots to check out. Yeah, here, I'm not too far from Yosemite. I'm not too far from Joshua Tree. There's lots of different places kind of in Southern California uh, that, that we can check out. Yeah, if other folks have other questions in terms of what it takes to get people outside, uh, little kids outside, um, I'm here and really happy to answer some of those questions uh, along with Laura and really like, and celebrating this whole week of our Samitas outdoors of just getting kids outside in whatever way that that looks like. Yeah, this weekend we actually um, took several kids outside. We invited them over to our Shady Lakes. We had, um, it was so fun. We had a bubble station. We had Shelby who's on right now. Um, she was making seed bombs with the kids. We had tent setups, um, archery, intro to archery. We had some nature journaling. The kids loved it. It was such an incredible day. And then we all shared a meal. We had some hot dogs and hamburgers and talked about all the fun we had and they took coloring pages home. They were so impressed with the coloring with the coloring book, which you all have access to if you'd like to download it yourselves. My it was, coloring it book is, is really beautiful. But it is really beautiful. And it's a great way, again, to just sort of celebrate being outside and what that, what that looks like and what that can mean for little kids. And uh, I did also want to mention that if you're in the state of California, you can... Um, borrow a California state parks pass from the library. And I had all these questions like, what does that look like? I actually was at the library with my kids last week and they're just right there. Uh, they're these little passes and it, it lets you be able to go into a park and park for free and be able to access that park. Um, my library said that when you borrow them, you get them for uh, two weeks. And then, um, then you return them, and somebody else like gets to go out and enjoy the park as well. Like, what a, what a cool, what a cool way to you know make things more inclusive and get more folks outside. That's incredible, Vanessa. I'm gonna see if we can push for something like that here. <laughs> that would be wonderful to just go to the library and check out a pass. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very accessible for for lots of folks to be able to do that, and so. I'm hoping we're hoping to borrow one to go to one of the state beaches, which is one of my favorite places to, to recreate. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Juan is saying that uh, they like to do activities and scavenger hunts outside. I know that Laura, you've done that with Latino Outdoors with your kiddos, uh, with the Samitas there. Uh, when we go outside, when I'm outside with my kids, even though I'm not printing out activities, we're definitely like looking at things and looking for things. Absolutely. Yeah. Where's the hawk? The hawk pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> the hawk pigeon, yeah. <laughs> yes. I would say though that I, I think my biggest take home point really for taking young children outside and recreating with young children is just, just to try it. Like just, Absolutely. get outside like whatever that looks like for you whether it's the park whether it's you know a trail or camping just try it because if it's disaster so what it's disaster there's some fun in that too like what's the worst that's going to happen your kid's going to melt down they're they're going to have a poop blowout like <laughs> you know those things are going to happen when you're anyway. in, in your house in your living room so you might as well be outside and you know i don't know about you laura but I personally feel like it's super important for my kids to just get out and run every day. <laughs> like the more physically tired they are, the well more well behaved we are, the better that they feel. It just works better. I 100% agree. Yeah, run them around as much as I can. <laughs> but you're, you're right. I think that you know it is important to get our kids outside, 
and not only our kids, just but my, myself, right? Getting myself outside with them. Um, and, and my biggest takeaway every time I go out them outside with them is just enjoying the time with them, enjoying the experience, right? I try, I, when I first started trying to hike with my kids, I would, you know, I was a pretty, pretty avid hiker prior. And I was like, oh, we're going to do six miles. We're going to go here. We're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to get to the top of the mountain. And I have to, I have to, I have to adjust my expectations and say, you know, it's, it's about the experience with my kids. It's about the time that I'm spending with them. It's about the connection I'm making. And so just knowing that they're enjoying it makes it so much better. Yeah, no, that's all of it is, is so true. Like it is really about the connection and it is really about being outside. And then, you know, they'll get there. They'll get to the six miles eventually. (laughs) I'm hoping. Yes. Yes. We will get there. You'll get the six miles. We'll get the, you know, we'll get the multi-day river trip in there. Exactly. Yeah. And and, and in my mind, I'm like, maybe we slow down because I don't, that means that they'll be old enough to get there. Right. (laughs) I don't want them to grow up that fast. Yes, very, very true. Yeah, but it is, it is just about just try it. You know, that would be my, my biggest, my biggest thing, like, just try it and start, start young. You know, I was a nursing mom. And that, in some ways, made it even easier, because less things to bring. And you could just sort of like, (laughs) you know, we hiked, I carried my kid. And then when they were hungry, we just stopped, I found a shady place, I was able to nurse right there on the trail. And, you know, and everybody was just relaxed and enjoying the time outside. So just- that has been my favorite about being a nursing mom is that I didn't I didn't have to carry as, as much, right? <laughs> like you, yes. want, you want lunch, here you go. <laughs> yeah. you know, now the snacks, the endless amount of snacks that need exactly. to, to, to be there to make it happen. But really, exactly. like it's just. Just try, just get out there. Like whatever it is, that activity, whether you want to get to the goal of skiing or to the goal of rafting or to the goal of like backpacking even, like you could do it. It's just taking taking those little steps. When in doubt, yeah. you can phone a friend. You can phone me. I'm happy to help. <laughs> yes, you know, like, yeah. I mean, let me know outdoors. We're a community. Like reach out. If you got questions, reach out. And if you go to our website, in the Samita section, there's lots of more information too. There's information about um, our coloring book is there. There's information about getting outside with kids. There's information about the state park pass in California. There's information about you know different regions that are putting on in-person events all of this week going into, I think, Sunday. Um, so maybe there's a region near you where you can hop on board there and and just, you know, try it, get outside, see, you know, the worst that can happen out there is what's going to happen in your house anyways. I believe in you. You guys can get outside. You can do it. The whole family. <laughs> yes, you said whether we can. We get those little kids. We'll get those kids out there making it happen. And uh, yeah, you know, the littlest one here or the older one, uh, you know a stick for a hiking pole and some rocks and the younger one carried and we're making it happen. It's fun. And you're going to keep making it happen. That's what I love. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, let's see if we've got other questions out there. We'll see what we've got going on here. So Lara, do you have a, a moment that kind of stands out to you? I know we talked disasters, but do you have a moment that kind of stands out to you in terms of like success of the, where you were like, we're doing it. Like everybody's happy. We're outside. We're like met my expectation. Oh, um, <laughs> yes. I think that um, any time that I wake up, And my little girl wakes up and she says, mama, can we go on a hike today? That is the moment that is just like, it hit my expectations, right? Like, because she wants to keep going. And it's, it's just, it's beautiful to hear that she wants to be outside. Mama, can we go for a walk? Mama, can we go for a hike? And this, I was, I was so surprised because yesterday she asked her dad, dad, can we go camping? And that's why we are camping in our backyard tomorrow. (laughs) 
I, I want the full report about how the, the camp out went. You got it. I'm buying s'mores. We're going to go all out. You know, we're, <laughs> it'll be perfect. <laughs> and if it's not, that, it's a learning experience, right? <laughs> it is. I will say that one tip I have for you for camping for the first time with two of them is a, a flashlight. Yes. Like that ownership piece. Like I, we gave my oldest a flashlight and was like, this is yours. Here is your sleeping bag here. And as soon as it was like his stuff, there was so much ownership there and so much joy. And then he's not always the best with darkness. And so at night, if he was nervous or anything, I mean, we're all in the tent, so we're all there. But you right. know, he turned on his little flashlight and was able to sort of like have some ownership of like, oh yeah, I can I can do this. I can you we know, like to he's all like, uh, no puedo solito. Yeah, yeah. We we like to use our like our phone cam fat flashlights at night to make little um shadow puppets, right? And so I think that would work really well in the tent also. There's just you know little bunnies or like our wolves that go across the, the tent. That's a great idea though. I'll have to bring our, our 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 little flashlights out and that way she can it'll be hers. Yes. Yeah. The the way our, our tent for our last camp out, it was, you know, all four of us in the tent, you know, for four sleeping bags, four of everything, um, plus uh, trucks and all of the dolls and the stuffed animals and the flash. Like he brought all the things. I was like, okay, Miho, here's your backpack. Pack what you want. And it was, you know, cars, his like play camera, all of those things came with us. The on essentials. The and it was, it was great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> his essentials. <laughs> I, I just okay, really want to comment and I go ahead uh, that uh, Christopher, I totally agree with you that uh, working, starting small and starting local is, is great. Um, yes. I think that was part of my mistake with that first camp out was one, it was a little too far Two, it was a little too cold, but the small and the local, and then you're developing that love for, for what is right there. And you're developing that, like that stewardship and that connection to like, what is just right there. Ooh, it looks like Roxanne is uh, is giving you the tip of giving us both the tip of uh, purchasing some headlamps, which I hadn't thought about. I, I I guess you could probably put them really small so you get the those tiny headlamps on those tiny people. But you know, I've I've found that with you know with preschool age kids, like the more ownership they have and the more like it's their job, like he always wants to help and have it be his job, that uh, it, it helps, it helps quite a bit. And Absolutely. Then, you know, and, and I believe in encouraging that and fostering that um, that sense of, of helping, right? We I always say, yeah, you wanna help sweep? You wanna help set up you know, the tent? You wanna help whatever? Because they will continue to want to help doing those things. And um, you wanna help brother play outside? <laughs> sure. <laughs> No, I, but I, I love, I love that idea. Glow sticks. Oh, I love that idea of glow sticks. I, I hadn't it. thought about that, but that could be, yeah. Turn it into a nighttime party out there with your glow sticks. Yes. The whole family. Dogs. <laughs> you know, we, can't, we can't lose the dogs that way too. That's, I actually, I have done that with my dog as well. I These are great recommendations that. and suggestions, guys. See, again, it's about the community. Like when we reach out to our community of just like, how do we make this happen? It's just like everything else with parenting. Like it's a little scary. It's a little like, oh, uh, how's this going to go? But, you know, you tap into your community, you start small, you do the baby steps, you bring your things. It's a good time. And you might forget one thing and, that, and then you reach out to your community and say, hey, can I borrow a cup of sugar? <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> that is very true. I did send my son to the next camp of like, can you ask them for a lighter? Because yes. we are here, but we don't have a lighter for <laughs> this campfire that we were all are really excited to sit around, but we have no way of starting it. it was, yeah. <laughs> community reaching out to the community to make it to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, and and you stayed calm, and I'm sure the community provided right. <laughs> Yes, that it, no, they definitely did. They definitely did. How can you say no to a super cute three-year-old asking right. you if you could, if they can borrow your lighter? <laughs> you know, that's right. Yes, send in the cute one when all else fails. Send in the cute one to go ask. 
<laughs> I love that. Note to self. <laughs> I'll be doing that next time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you know, so many good tips and so many good reasons to just get get out there with our kiddos and, and start them small and in all the different activities that we like to do and being able to share that, share that with our families, uh, share that with, uh, with Ed. That's sweet, Elsa. I think, see, and those are the memories that are, that are in your brain, right? That, that auntie who always had something that's, that's my partner. He's like, you know, you need a knife. Here you go. He like whips it out of his like tool belt, right? <laughs> You need to spark that fire. <laughs> it's, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's funny because I always tell them you overpack, but then, you know, but somebody always needs something. <laughs> there you go. You always, you always need an anti an antenna yeah. who has, who has one of everything. <laughs> or maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably two for sure. Well, if there aren't any other questions, um, I'd like to just thank everybody for being here today and giving us some suggestions and listening to us talk about, you know, our essentials and how we how we recreate outside. Yeah, no, the same. I'd like to thank you, Laura, for joining me in this conversation and then for everybody who's listening and, you know, that final take home tip of just give it a shot. And know that this week we at Latino Outdoors are celebrating our Semitas outdoors, celebrating getting kids of all ages outside, finding ways to, you know, get them to connect to place, finding ways to get them to build community outside. Um, I know that, that later this week we've got a career panel that is going to be speaking of different careers in the outdoors, you know, something great for you to tune into with your middle schooler, with your high schooler of just like, hey, not only can we recreate outside, not only can we enjoy being outside, but maybe it's a career path for people who really love being outdoors. Hope to see all your faces on our on our next panel. Right on. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, vamos afuera, vamos outdoors. Vamos afuera. Adios. <laughs>